So we're at the Y1 Studios and we've got the one, the only, Matt Goss from Bross who's outside. You can see there he's just uh, meeting his adoring public. There we go. And we're going to speak to Matt Goss in the studio uh, with uh, an interview with a bit of a difference actually. And you'll see what the difference is very soon. Uh, but main reason because we've got two lovely ladies. Say hello girls. Hi. There we go. Uh, so... These are Ultimate Brossettes, and they are going to interview Matt Goss himself. So I'm not going to intervene. They're going to be doing that. I'm just going to be controlling the session and making sure everything goes smoothly. Uh, so he's about to walk through the door. So there we go. I'll just get the, uh, the door behind us as he walks in. He's got his hat on. He's just been meeting his adoring fans. And uh, there he is. There's Matt walking through the door right now. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Welcome, it's Matt Goss. Woohoo! Hey. Thank you not for having me, my friend. <laughs> no, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. We've got a massive crowd outside in the studio right now uh, who are in the streets in the freezing cold, and we're in the nice warmth of they, the studio. They look very stylish. They've got nice coats. And yeah, they have, yeah. Rosy cheeks. And if you notice, they're wearing smiles. They are wearing smiles. I like that. Wearing smiles. That's a good name for a brand, wearing smiles. It is actually, and a great yeah. name for an album. So yeah. I'll take the credit on that one. Okay. Uh, we've also got in the studio, you are? I'm Elizabeth. And? Cheryl. Cheryl, okay. And they are going to be asking you questions. First, before we ask you questions, we want their experiences of how they know you and also how they have become to be super fans and brossettes. So we'll start with Elizabeth first. Uh, Elizabeth, yours. tell us tell us the stories of your experiences with, with Matt. So I've been a Bross fan since you came out, right, right at the very beginning. Didn't meet you, went to see um, you in Glasgow for the Push Tour, the original one, right, right back at the beginning with my best friend on the bus to Glasgow. Didn't meet you for years, always thought I was going to marry you. Uh, told everybody I was going to marry you in the future, you were my soulmates. We've had lots of coincidences, but didn't meet you until... 20 years ago this year. I met you here in York at the Grand Opera House. Oh, yeah. um, you saw me in the crowd and I'd want to meet and greet then. <laughs> and we had a hug. And when we separated, your earring had got caught in my hair. Really? <laughs> yeah. And as we pulled apart, your earring fell out and it fell on the floor. And the two of us were rooting around on the floor looking for your earring. Really? <laughs> Well, it's 20 years ago, I had an earring. 20 years ago. Wow. And my sister brought in this wallpaper roll that I'd made for you um, when I was 14, and it had I Love You, Matt, written on the full wallpaper roll. And on the other side, it was all poems and drawings. I actually, it was completely covered, that? wasn't it? I do remember that. <laughs> I do remember that. It was like wow. completely, like, it was I, completely, completely it covered. It was yeah. completely covered. That's so. brilliant. Let's move on to Cheryl. Uh, you've got some certain circumstances, haven't you, that uh, that you've come across with, with Matt before. So, Matt, you know Bev. Yeah, I do. Of course, yeah. cheeky Bev. <laughs> yeah. So, me, Bev and Lou... Oh, what have we done? What Stop. have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really <laughs> ominous now. <laughs> we, we stopped traffic on Regent Street. I think you were at the Savoy. Right. And so we were driving down Regent Street. Your driver took a wrong turn in. Bev right. was driving our car. <clears throat> uh, took a wrong turn in. Your driver backed up traffic on Regent Street and then Bev doubly backed traffic up because you'd gone wrong, we went wrong and the whole of Regent Street just, just came to a standstill. Well, we've, she, we've caused standstills everywhere. She's responsible entirely for that. <laughs> I mean, we've caused one or two standstills across, the, not just in Britain, across the world, but it's, I remember we were in Oxford Street and there were 12,000 people outside HMV and we, and they actually ripped the car door off of our car and my press officer Joe Donnelly wore my jacket and everyone went for the red jacket and then wow. I went down in a meat wagon in a police car at 90 miles an hour down Oxford Street so it was <laughs> it definitely we've had some, I think that's the thing with with, my, with Bross and my career is that there's a much more rebellious side to our life than people realise these guys never say that they're getting old they're just they they just are full of youth and new people come in and and it's just it's very inclusive but there's a kind of a, a cheeky rebellion about that people that have followed me over the years and i love to see it because it i always wonder if it's so i just feel like it's just very very um uplifting for me because they a lot of the guys look 
the same to me. It's just it's insane. It's just really there's a beauty about the, the people that I've met and these guys outside now. Just I love them with all my heart. Well, do you know what? We, we saw the humility in you just going out there and hugging your adoring fans. And it's the time you've got for them as well. That's the main thing. I mean, they're cheeky, they're gorgeous, they're, they're fun. Yeah, the one I'm saying to point at the mouth in a little bit crazy. But, but, <laughs> they, um, but, but you know but they they know it and they're just but the thing is it's up to us if we decide to get old and, and go oh no I'm too old it's just it really is a journey and they've come to see me in Vegas they've come all over the world we've been you know have you been to Vegas? You cancelled oh, well I was there for 11 years you should have chosen another week <laughs> How rude. How rude. <laughs> let's move on to some questions then. Uh, Elizabeth, let's have uh, question number one from yourself. Okay, well, following through from the um, the diamond earring and being caught, mm. that was a moment that I've been like really building myself up for over the years meeting you. So I was just wondering if you've ever had an embarrassing incident happen with somebody that you've looked up to, um, some famous person that you've always wanted to meet and something um, slightly... I, I wish, honestly, I wish I sound really boring. I wish I had an embarrassing moment with another another subject that I admired. I mean, I was lucky enough to meet Stevie Wonder, and he was lovely to me. I, I met him at Motown Records in New York, um, and he was lovely. Um, people like Michael Jackson, who wanted us to. Uh, I think one of my biggest regrets is that. Michael Jackson asked us to open for him at Wembley Stadium and our management said no because we were playing Wembley Stadium and I just wish we'd done that show because we could have done it two nights you know I don't mind opening for Michael but it would have been amazing um, meeting Princess Diana made me blush uh, she just had a way about her um, hanging out with the Rolling Stones in Kansas City uh, playing table tennis with them and Ronnie Wood wearing my jacket live on stage and coming out playing ba -da -da, ba -da, and, he's, and he's wearing my jacket get it back and they've all signed it for me so it's not really embarrassing moments just moments of gratitude really where I've met my heroes I, I was lucky enough to sing recently for Muhammad Ali um, before he passed and um, so it just it, it's never ending you know like but I've got good mates like um, people that I love and, and I'm happy for because I've seen him grow like people like Jason Statham came to my show three times with the, and came with his dad I mean that's a big compliment when people that you love and admire come to your show you know so it's just not really embarrassing but it's 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 really moments of like wow you know mm. how lucky am I where this part of your body you know, your, your voice where the voice takes you you know Absolutely. Lovely. Great question. So my best mates, Bev and Lou, who um, they, they've always given me the nickname, their little Yorkshire, Yorkie Pud. I call them my little Lancashire hot pots. I can so, see why. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a Yorkshire pudding wrap? Oh, oh my God. Have, Have you ever just, had a Yorkie just, pudding wrap? Just, I'm slightly aroused right now. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I really am. I'm slightly aroused. I mean, that one of my favourite things in the world is the Yorkshire pudding. So I didn't know of this invention called a Yorkshire pudding wrap. And if there is one, then we were going to have dinner tonight. But I think we got... I mean, it's my fav one of my favourite things in the world. Not many people can make it, but... You know, I, it's literally next door! Yeah. Okay, well, I think I guess we're all having Yorkshire pudding I had one before wraps, I came here. Get, can, can we can we get Matt a Yorkie pudding no, wrap? No, I'm gonna go, I want to have the experience. I want to go with next door and right and, and, and order it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got Wayne mouthing outside. We got. I've got a phone. No, no window. All right, so Yorkie pudding wrap. So you you have it's one of your favourite things, Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, it, without question. I mean, it's it's second to only one or two things I can't mention. And you're in Yorkshire. Yeah, and oh, thanks for the observation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, next question. Okay, so I want to know what your guilty pleasure is. Ooh. My guilty pleasure is chocolate. It will always be chocolate. Um, uh, Toblerone. I mean, I have to really meet my sister. My nemesis like Toblerone and fruit and nut. I just, I love chocolate. Mm. And um, morning sex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never heard of that one. Yeah. I must try a bit. I think, yeah, it's a guilty pleasure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, your second question, please. My other half did the unthinkable at Christmas and he ordered me some perfume 
online and he had no idea what it smelled like. So he went for the um, dis- description, you know, sensual notes of this, that and other. Christmas Day arrived. I'd, I was made up with cold, so I couldn't smell anything. Um, my sense of smell gone for about three days. He went to the gym, came back, and he took one look at me and he went, what's the matter? He says, you've, you've smelt the perfume, haven't you? And I went, yes. I said, it smells like old lady. <laughs> 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 Seriously. So... So my question, Matt, is do you have <laughs> any sort of like plans of doing your own like perfume for well, ladies? Well, because of, you always smell all, so good. Well, I appreciate the compliment, but before <laughs> I need to address this, what your story. And I think, you know, there are some, certain parts of your body that, that, that okay if they smell like an old lady. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> I think it's okay. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to look on the bright side of life. You've got to, you know, look at the optimistic side of what that is. I mean, it could, could smell of cheese and onion, you know. So. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm, uh, okay, no. I, am, I am actually, one of my dreams is to actually do my fragrance. And I'm back in the UK from America after 25 years. And to be honest with you, uh, fashion clothing I don't think it should be as expensive as it is and for me it's better to do a, a, a line of clothing lifestyle brand candles fragrance, just where I get a feeling of you guys trust me where I just say look this is really cool and just it might be slightly less in fabric you know Italian fabric maybe not but certainly in style and something where the fellas and ladies can really get into that's definitely one of my dreams is to get the lifestyle brand and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm back is just and now I can actually focus on those things but you know, I've recently changed my fragrance a little bit, but I, I, I'm in love with fragrance. And the, the process of building a fragrance is a really incredible thing. There's a there's a shop in London called Flores, and it's it's one of the oldest perfumery. I think it's the oldest perfumery in London. And Edward, who owns it, is uh, he actually made made a perfume for the Queen. And, wow! Uh, so the, the rumours are that they've got a little tunnel underneath their their shop that goes to Buckingham Palace. So yeah, I'm deeply interested in fragrances. The perfume that he bought me um, was. A nine to, I mean, I love anything vintage and old fashioned, yeah. um, 1920s. He bought yeah. me, it was made in the 1920s. Uh-huh. It's called Shalimar by Shalimar. Uh, Galan. Okay. But it smells like old lady talc. Okay. <laughs> that was my first well, perfume. Well, I'll still stay tuned. <laughs> there's, a, there's a time and a place for old lady talc, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of, of America, uh, what was it like living over there? And, and what's the comparison? You know, truthfully, th- what is the, how yeah. do you feel that comparison? Well, I think there's pros and cons. I mean, the, the, I think the Americans get a really hard time and saying it's fake and LA's fake and all that. It's, that's absolutely not the case. I think success is a really, really good word in America. And, and success is encouraged. No matter what walk of life you come from, whatever your dreams are, people will invariably in America, well, well let's try, man. Let's let's go for it, you know. Let's it's it's not a bad idea. Let's go for it, you know. So like, and that's a much better thing. Or if you've got a nice car and you pull up next to a fellow, will say, "Hey, man, I love that car. What is it, man?" And you just be like, "It's it's more it's more aspirational." And I think sometimes in in the UK it can be a little jealousy culture and and you know. I, so my mission of optimism and going around the country like I am and encouraging people if your neighbour buys a, a nice new car go and knock on their door and say I love your motor you know so I think it's um, uh, but then being here and having th- that familiar side of the British public the way they treat me I-, I feel like a member of the family I've lost so much and lost people that I love as you know um, you know, to be honest with you, there's selfies and the conversations. And I'll go, I've been just been in a couple of shops in, in York, and everyone's really, they're like, we're honored to have you in the, in the shop and we have a conversation. And I'm so grateful for the way I'm treated in this country and the familiarity of my journey. I was 17 years old when I started in the public eye, and I've grown up, I've grown up. And into a man that's in front of this, uh, in front of the British public, and it, it's something you have to learn to navigate. And I'm proud that I've never had a drug, never had a cigarette. I, I take care of myself, and um, I'm proud I've lived a certain way. I feel very observed, not just literally, but it, metaphorically. You know, I feel observed by the people I've lost that are in heaven, and I want to make the people here with us now like I want to make them proud. Uh, 
I'm proud of them and I want that to continue I, to my dying day I want to hopefully make people proud and elevate their mood and transport them into a place where I, they can believe that anything is possible anyone out watching now or listening now it's never too late to, to just go you know you know, I'm going to just go and do what I want to do and, and, and just encourage people. It's a better way to live. A round of applause for that one. What a great speech. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, listen, we've got uh, a wonderful guitar over here. What is it? What, what is oh, the guitar? Well, I meant the guitarist was wonderful. <laughs> no, no, no. Forget oh, you behind it. <laughs> wow. It's it it's looks quite, stupendous. Yeah, play guitar. Why are you t- Noticed the guitar? No, no. It, it was, well, my, my daughter plays guitar. She okay. plays violin as well, and I, I know a nice little bit of craftsmanship. You know, when yes. I see one. It's like a mini. It's like a mini. It's, like a it's very. It looks very, very nice, and it's got a gorgeous sound. So, what we'd like to do right now is say thank you, much indeed, to our brosets. Give a round of applause for the brosets. <laughs> And let, we'll let me address it. So, so let me ask you. Yeah, well, you go, yeah, still, go on then. Let's get go the way. Do you still consider yourself brosettes, or do you consider yourself? What is it? Because we we've, we've been we've been. I've had a 27 year career outside of that band, and I'm not saying I'm I'm so proud of being in Bros, and I and I still want to do Bros gigs. But is that what is that what it is? Is it is it brosette? Is it gossy girl? Is it is it MGA? Is it what what is? It? For me, it's everything. It's, it's, it's everything. brosette. It's it's everything. Okay, yeah, that it's, makes sense. It's been because I think sometimes the, the brosette is is a beaut. I mean, I love the fact there is a immediacy about that word, but I think yeah. it's. I feel like it's so much more yeah. of a journey than just a period. That I mean, it was a wonderful period, but we've been. That you guys have been abroad with me. You've been. We've we've been on a journey, and it's much more than music. It's just, it's kind of a, a friendship, kind of a, a journey. Uh, hopefully, inspirational kind of. a thing it's it's i'm glad you said it's more than that yeah what are you going to say and it's a family yeah you know i can see a lot of people outside that i know yeah do you know what i mean I, like when you're in london i can walk down the street and like see so many people that i know yeah i travel all around with, with my friends and i've even met friends in um in cyprus right right you know we've arranged to meet we've both been on holiday at different parts of cyprus and we've, yeah. we've hooked up because of you know through you thank you and i think that's why i asked the question because i feel so many times there's this you know it, it compartmentalizes you into a little kind of little nook in history where it's so much broader than that because the MGA is actually so I don't know if you know is the Matt Army but it's it's people that help other people that get down to gigs get down to shows and just in life there's this kind of network of help and this kind of like-minded kind of kind-hearted people that would help each other even hashtag MGA online I've seen people answer questions and, and and help people because of that. So it's good for people out there to know that it's it's a kind of a little it's a bigger universe than people think. You know, it's not just you know ripped jeans and Doc Martens. I mean, these are very sophisticated people too. We're nanas now. <laughs> <laughs> founding member. Who's the founding member of that? Is it you? Yeah, I mean, it was just we just it was just it was during. It, there's been times when I just want to create a network that was bigger than myself do you know what I mean just so that they can identify with their friends and that it's just kind of a it's kind of like the bat it's like the bat signal it just goes that's, up that's and, great yeah. I, that's a great uh, way to explain it as well and uh, I love that and hopefully I could be part of the MGA you are part if of the MGA you, thank you very much indeed that's great it's such an honour it really is the OMGs <laughs> <laughs> just made that up. so I'm just going to sing um as you can see, it's pretty makeshift. I like that this this room is like the goldfish bowl, very makeshift. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this was your office, sir. You, you've <laughs> you've definitely surprised me, but I like it. Um, it's my first number one record. I'm proud of contributing to this as a songwriter, and also it's just one of those songs that kind of deconstructed well into not just a pop record, but into a into a, a bluesy kind of version with a, a guitar. <laughs> Cause I owe you nothing, nothing at all I owe you nothing, nothing, nothing at all I owe you nothing, nothing, nothing 
I was waiting for the <laughs> but he never came that's probably why you were never a rock star <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have another one as well um, uh, we can do a, a mellow vibe this is what my, my granddad used to sing this to me and it was a, a song by Nat King Cole and um, Ooh. Ooh. just a beautiful song and it, it was a simple piece of philosophy it's called Nature Boy oh a boy a very strange enchanted boy they say he wandered very far very far over land and sea a little shy but sad But very wise was he And then one day That magic day he passed my way Spoke of many things, fools and kings. This he said to me The greatest thing that you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved. So thank you so much indeed. We love this because this is what you get to do. I love it. Let's do the beautiful unknown before I go because yeah. I like it. Oh, okay. oh, would you? Yeah, let's do the beautiful unknown. You see, that was unprovoked. Oh. Yeah. Unprovoked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like this song because I wrote this, I wrote this song actually um, about the removal of fear, you know, and we don't often think the unknown is a beautiful thing. We have to face forward and believe that next week, next month, and next year is going to be a great place. And um, I love this song, the way that Deacon, Deacon um, deconstructs into just this form. So anyway, this is called The Beautiful Unknown. I've been walking down Broadway 
thinking about making new memories and everything in me is falling into paid moon cracks this stranger's hand that i'm holding i can't explain the connection all i know all i know it feels like home i can carry the weight of the world on my shoulders but my heart has no protection the silence that we're sharing feels like perfection so if you listen you can feel it in my heartbeat in your hand but this joy feels good in such a cynical man so raise a glass to the beautiful unknown be prepared to undress your soul we just met but we're old friends that's how life is and how it should end I don't mean no disrespect, but I did not hear one word you said. Sitting at the bar, looking in your eyes, your heart is in my head. If only, if only you knew all the plans I've been making. I don't think you'd call me crazy, I'd kiss you right where you stand. The lights go on, it's not polite. Outside this bar, it's getting bright. I'm going to walk you home, but I don't want to let you go. Courage from the Dutch, but not too much. Yeah, we shared some stories. I'm letting go of everything that hurt me before. So raise a glass to the beautiful unknown. Be prepared to undress your soul. But we're old friends There's our life is in hell We should end Raise a glass To the beautiful unknown Be prepared To undress your soul We just met But we're old friends And that's how And how it should end And that's how life is And how it should end And that's how life is And how it should end Yeah! <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Thank you so much indeed. Thank you to the crowds outside. Thank you to our MGA. <laughs> And thanks to the, the, the main guy, Matt Goss. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. That was great. How was your experience, Matt? It's the most original experience, uh, the most wonderful experience. And I love this fella. <laughs> And, uh, thank you for just a beautiful, beautiful, a beautiful end of, end of promo for the, uh, this day. So oh, cheers, man. You are, you're a gem. Oh, thank you. Ooh.